tell you, um, I just, for the past few weeks, <clears throat> felt just a lot of heaviness. As um, Elder, Elder Bates said, I know as Elizabeth alluded to, um, you know, last year, 2022 was difficult, difficult year, especially the last part during the holiday seasons, we just experienced a lot of passing, <clears throat> you know, and I tell you, standing in this spot, um, being the pastor, it's just, you, you just feel that weight, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and, um, you know, you, it's just something that you just never get used to, we know death happens, <clears throat> But just hearing that song about Jesus, he loved me so. <clears throat> and I stand here, I sit and say, Jesus, you loved me while I was still a sinner. Yes, God. And you came down here as the Lamb of God <clears throat> to take away sin from this world. You did that for me. And I tell you, I get so emotional, so you have to work with me <clears throat> as I go through this sermon. I know we have a lot of grieving families, but it's 2023. We can be grateful that we're in 2023. Let's just, let's just, just be grateful that we're in 2023. And I tell you, uh, 2023, I know we just, I just preached on the sermon series, New Beginnings. <clears throat> and I really thought my plan was to continue in 2023 with the new, new, new beginnings. I thank God for what he has shown me in 2022, the vision that he showed me um, <clears throat> about being a salt and being a light. And 2023, there's some new things that God has shown me that he wants, that he, that I need to be obedient on and with. One thing, you know, um, this book of John, this book of John, I said it a couple times, a couple sermons, past sermons, that this book of John is just so deep, so rich. <clears throat> And as you're going to see in 2023, there's going to be a theme that we're going to be, I'm going to be preaching from. It's going to be from the book of John for the whole year. It's going to take us the whole year to work through this book of John. There's going to be three parts that I will be preaching on. Part one, which we'll start today, is witnessing Christ, the Lamb of God. Part two. It's going to be following Christ, the man of God. And part three will be exalting Christ, the son of God. But it's going to take us through the whole year. Now, in between there, in between the parts, we will be preaching on other sermon series. Like, we'll go back to the vision. We'll talk about mental health during the month of May. But we're going to be focusing throughout this year on the book of John and our DOTs if you really want to follow what I'm preaching you already know we're going to be going through the book of John I know some DOTs have already done it I think Oasis a few years ago we uh, went through the book of John but it's a book that I think has something for everyone in this book it's a book that I know myself and I was talking with Denise, the director of Christian education. It's a book that anytime we have a new convert, a new person, of a babe in Christ, we send them to the book of John. If you really want to know about your Lord and Savior, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, you can find, find him in the book of John. I tell you, um, <clears throat> this is past Friday. You know, we went to a homegoing service. And at this homegoing service, I wasn't one of the ones who had to officiate or even 
do the eulogy, so I was just in the audience. I tell you, it was uh, the minister Ed Orr's brother's homegoing service. <clears throat> I tell you one thing that I really got out of that service is about a great life. What makes a great life? And I'm telling you, this guy had a platform. His brother was an NBA player. His brother was a Division I uh, basketball coach. His brother touched many, many people. And I tell you, listening to the people, it wasn't about the pomp and circumstances of seeing all these uh, professional basketball players, but the things that they said about this guy, the things that they said, you, you, you heard people who you knew probably did not know who Jesus Christ, but they were quoting scripture about Ed's brother. And when you saw these interviews that he would do, not just interviews uh, um, amongst just you know, uh, people in the congregation or whatever. This is interviews on ESPN. And he would start off every interview to God be the glory. And then as you, you're listening to it, I was listening to the interviews, looking on the screen, and he would drop some scripture. You know, he would say, every good and perfect gift comes from above. That's that, that's word. That, that's in James. He talks about, I guess James must have been his favorite uh, uh, book because he was talking about how when you go through trials, you know, there's perseverance. You, you have to persevere. He was talking about how, you know, um, in Jeremiah, you know, God, God uh, our thoughts are not, uh, um, well, God's uh, plans for us is plans that would not uh, give us, uh, make us evil, but the plans to make us prosper. He's dropping all these scriptures in these interviews for the world. And he knew what his purpose was. As what Elizabeth was saying, you know, about finding your purpose. All of us have a purpose. And we're, 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 we're journeying through, we're beginning a new year in 2023. And I'm here to tell you, each and every one of us have a purpose. But when you are at, on a platform, and even though myself and Milt were sitting next to one another, and we saw this highlight of Ed's brother playing in the NBA, playing, uh, he, was, he was for the Knicks, and they were playing against the uh, Boston Celtics. And there, it was like three seconds left in the game, and Kevin McHale makes two free throws, ties it up 109, 109. So Patrick Ewing gets the ball, throws it out to uh, Ed's brother. Ed's brother drives down the court, and Larry Bird, Hall of Fame Larry Bird, everyone knows Larry Bird. Ed's brother uh, squares up to Larry, shoots it, no seconds left, wins the game. You would think that would be his most important or most highlighted moment of his life. No, it wasn't. It was to God be the glory. He even said that when, that he was in his uh, hotel room and what changed his life was listening to Jimmy, uh, was it Jimmy Swagger? Jimmy Swagger. Changed his life. Changed his life. He knew what his purpose was. He loved basketball, loved playing. But he knew his calling was to touch people. His calling was coaching. And you saw these players who is life of church. That's living a great life. And today, today, prayfully, I'll be able to explain to you about a great life. And it's through this one man that John the Beloved, John the Disciple, is pointing to John the Baptist. And we're going to see, hopefully, we'll, we'll, prayfully, we'll be able to see how John the Baptist's life will show us on January 1st, 2023, how to live a great life for this year. So if you uh, want to turn to me to John chapter 1, John chapter 1, and I know uh, it says 19 through 34, but I want us to back up to verse 6. I want to read verse 6 and 7, and then we'll jump to 19 through 34. So it'll be 18 verses that I'll be reading. But if you can go to John chapter 1, 
stand as I read the word of God. <clears throat> and we'll start with verse 6 and 7, then we'll jump down to verse 19. It reads as follows. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Jump down to verse 19. It says, now this is a testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there stands one among you whom you don't know. It is he who coming after me is before me. Whose sandals, whose sandals straps I am not worthy to lose. These things were done in Beth, Bethbara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he who, of, of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me. For he was before me, I, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon, upon whom, you, whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Amen. May God bless the doers of his word. <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, we just thank you. <clears throat> we just thank you for everything that you have done, that you're doing, that you're going to do for us, Father. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to take away the sins of this world, Father. We thank you for just just uh, loving us before we even loved ourselves. God, I pray that the words that you give me, that you you uh, uh, that people hear you and they see you, not me, Father. Hide me behind your words. We'll forever give your Son Jesus all the honor, glory, and praise. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> so the title of this sermon today is, of course, "Behold the Lamb of God." Behold the Lamb of God. And there's a question, the question that I really want you to meditate on as I preach and give this uh, a, a quick message. And it, and it is, <clears throat> do you want to live a great life in 2023? Do you want to live a great life in 2023? We are starting off a new year, January 1st. 2023. So how do you want to live your life? Of course, we all want it to be a great life. Now we see John, John, this book of John, I, I preached on it, and I know I'm not going to go back and preach on verses 1 through 18. I do, I, I do ask you, if you really want to get this whole gist of John, go back to the last two sermons. Um, the first sermon a couple of weeks ago was John chapter 1, verses 18, uh, 1 through 18, and then last week, on, um, on Christmas was John chapter 1, verse 14. But um, John, John, I said before that John the disciple, he starts off talking about 
Jesus talking about God, talking about in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And he's, he's, he's talking about the above. And now you see six verses later, six verses later, he brings it down to earth. And he's talking about this man, this one man, John. Now, we see that this person, John, that he's talking about is, is we, we refer to him as John the Baptist. Now, some people might think that John the Baptist, the reason why he's called John the Baptist is because he started the Baptist denomination. Some people might think that. <laughs> You're laughing. Because some people do, do think that. Uh, but that, that's not the reason. John the Baptist is not called John the Baptist because he started the Baptist denomination. Now, uh, John the Baptist, Greek for the Baptist, is that he, it, it means baptizes. So literally, if you want to call John by name, it would be called John the Baptizer. Now, John wasn't the only one who baptized. You know, the other disciples baptized also, but we don't call them Peter the Baptizer or Thomas the Baptizer or James the Baptizer or even Paul the Baptizer. But we call John the Baptizer. The reason why we call John the Baptizer is because we want to distinguish, they want to distinguish John the Baptizer or John the Baptist from John the Beloved. See, the person who wrote the book of John is John the Beloved. He's a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's that beloved disciple, that, that disciple that was in Jesus' DNA. So the reason why we call John the Baptist, the, uh, the Baptist is to distinguish him between John the Beloved. John the Baptist did not write the book of John. John the Beloved did. But we see that John the Baptist, many times in Scripture, it seems like John the Baptist gets the bad raps. You know, John the Baptist, if you uh, read about John the Baptist, you know, he's this crazy-eyed, you know, this uh, disheveled, crazy man walking in the uh, desert. You know, John the Baptist was, yes, he was one that ate grasshoppers and wild honey. John the Baptist wore animal skin. John the Baptist, he's, his ministry was in the desert. In the wilderness, so he gets a bad rap. You know, John the Baptist was was uh, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of strange, but even back in those days. But the things that we get to takeaways that we can get from John the Baptist. One takeaway that I get is that John the Baptist makes us realize that man looks at outward appearance, while God looks at the inward. God looks at the heart, while man looks at the outward. See, John the Baptist did not look like anyone that we, that we would take seriously. See, even today, John the Baptist, if John the Baptist was to come and preach today, some churches wouldn't even let him up in the pulpit. Some churches would not even let him walk up into the pulpit. They'll say, yeah, John... I know you, Jesus' cousin. Yes, John, I know you're the forerunner of Jesus. And I know you want to speak to our congregation. But, John, do you have a suit? Oh, you don't have a suit? You don't have a robe? Oh, you can't come talk to our congregation. You know, we can't have you coming up talking to our people. They're they're not going to pick up what you're throwing down because of the way you look. You know, they might say, they might even say, look, John, like even Peace Baptist might say, look, John, you know, we got two... Two barbers, you know, you can go to Minister Mike Thomas or you can go to Damon. They can give you an edge up and everything. They can, you know, fix you up. But we, we can't have you come into our church and preach looking like that. You know, it's not like you're wearing a, a mink coat. Cause he says that he wore animal skins. You see, John wasn't shopping at Macy's. John was not shopping at Dillard's or, 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 or uh, Kohl's. You see, John was, was shopping on the clearance rack. John's walking in the wilderness. He, oh, you are dead? Okay, I, I, I do need a rabbit arm. Oh, I need a squirrel scarf. John was wearing those kind of animal skins. He wasn't wearing the mink and the fur. So no, John could not come. See, I'm glad that we at, P, at, at Peace Baptist, if John was to come, because we, I, think, I think John would say, you know what, Peace Baptist, you guys are a contagious Christian community loving others to Christ. 
Because I don't think that we would have a problem with John coming up speaking, because we're not that type of church that you need to come up with a suit. I'm glad, I'm glad we're not. I wear a suit here and there, but I'm glad that we're that kind of church that looks at the inside and not the outside, because you might get, get a preacher that come up here that's all flossing, because John's not a flosser. John's not flossing. So you, you'll get a preacher all looking good, and they'll be uh, uh, preaching, and they'll be preaching to all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, Pickles and onions on the sesame seed, but and then you know some people in the audience say, "Man, pastor said that you all beef patties." Oh yeah, pickles. I love pickles. You know, because you're looking at the outside, not listening to what he's saying. John is Jesus' cousin. John is a forerunner of Christ. You mean people won't pick up what he's what he's throwing down? And and the other thing that we can take away from John is that his ministry. John's ministry in the wilderness is just as important as Paul's ministry at Ephesus, at Corinth, and at Rome. It's just as important. His ministry in the wilderness is just as important because it's a ministry that God called him to. And also it's a ministry that's pointing people to Jesus Christ. So his ministry is just as important. So do you want to live a life, a great life in 2023? And I'm here to share with you how you can do that through the life of John, the life of John the Baptist. And the first thing I want you to point to, the reason why I wanted us to read uh, verses 6 and 7, because the first thing to live a life, a great life in 2023 is that you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Do you know who you are? Because some of us can attest. Elizabeth just spoke on it, you know, not knowing what your purpose is, not knowing why you're here. God has a plan for each and every one. Do you, do you know who you are? Verse 6 said that John was a man sent from God. See, John knew he was sent from God. He was a man sent from God. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. As Christians, we have to know that we're sent from God. God has a plan for each and every one of us. He, God did not put us anywhere by accident. He put us in the jobs where we are, I mean, where we work. He put us in the um, uh, 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 place of worship where, where we go. He put us in the homes or the community where we live. He even put you in the family where you were born in. He put you there for a reason. And, the re and I know that because we know God makes, made each and every one of us. He made us fearfully and wonderfully made, meaning that he took time when he made each and every one of us. John was sent from God. And also it said in verse 7 that John was here to witness about the, about the light. We all know that Jesus said that I am the light of the world. You know, anyone who, who follows me will not walk in darkness. Christians, we are, 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 are also, Jesus also said that we are the light of the world. We are, that's, that's our vision. Matthew chapter 5, we are the light of the world. Our job is to tell people about the light of Jesus Christ. Our job is to show the blind that, 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 that Jesus' light shines, that, that Jesus is the light in this dark world. John knew that he was sent from God. John knew what his mission was, what, 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 what he was supposed to do to testify about the light the light of Jesus Christ. And John also mentions in verse 22, they ask him who he was. And he says that I am the voice in the wilderness. This is what John says. So he knows who he is. He said, I'm that voice in the wilderness. And, and, those, and those Levites knew, or those Jews, the Jews knew what John was talking about when he said wilderness. Because they can go back to Exodus where the, the children of Israel, they, they, they left Egypt and they wandered where? In the wilderness, before they reached the promised land. You see, we're not in the promised land yet. We're still in the wilderness. We are in the wilderness today. And our job is to be that voice 
today in this wilderness to lead people to the path of Jesus Christ. See, John knew what his testimony was. John knew what his purpose was. And we see how John knew what his purpose was because John came in the wilderness, this unorthodox uh, 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 preacher. He did not, uh, um, uh, 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 he was not taught under any type of school. You know, he didn't have any type of big mentor. John was in the wilderness. And we see that John is baptizing people. People are coming to John and they're hearing this preacher and they are repenting. They are, they, they feel convicted of the sins that they committed and they need forgiveness. So they're co- going to John. You see, John had first tens of people and then he had hundreds and then thousands of people are coming to listen to John. And John, he's telling them that the the, the, the kingdom of heaven is coming. And then we see people who are coming to John. They're, they're listening to him. They're transforming their lives. John is baptizing them in the Jordan River. John didn't have no, no uh, 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 baptismal pool. His pool was in the wilderness. It was in the Jordan. And he had all these people, like a revival, a revival. Thousands of people are coming to John. And John is just telling them, he's He's testifying about the light. He's testifying about Jesus Christ. And people are listening because John knew what his purpose was. John knew what his calling was. He knew who he was. But now, in order to also live a great life, you have to know who you're not. Because I tell you, John was put on the spot. See, John had all these people following him. And the, the uh, Jewish people, the Jews, got upset, like, whoa. You know, the, the, uh, the uh, Jews was like, you know, squeaky on the color purple. You know, Harbo, who, who this woman? And they're like, Harbo? Or, or, hey, who this? They're like, who is this? So they're like, look, we need to find out what's going on. So then they sent some Levites, they sent some priests, to go find who, who, who this is. So then they, they, they go and they started asking them questions. I tell you, it's kind of like, let's say in Avondale. If Avondale had a grocery store and it's the only grocery store in Avondale, you know, Avondale is going to make a lot of money. See, these Jews had a racket. They, they, they had a good thing going on. See, Avondale, if they had a grocery store, that one grocery store is going to make a lot of money because there's no grocery store in Avondale. If Avondale had a gas station, you know, um, you know they're, they're going to make a lot of money because there's no gas station in Avondale. Now, if another gas station comes or another uh, uh, grocery store comes, it's going to take away from the profits. And they're going to have a problem. I remember my first job, my first job out of college was uh, I worked for Kroger. And I was a co-manager for Kroger. One of our responsibilities was whatever neighborhood store that we worked in, we we were supposed to go and do these comparative uh, uh, um, checks, price checks. You know, who this is? You know, what are you doing? You know, so our, our biggest competition back in the 90s was Thriftway. You know, this is before the Internet, so we weren't able to go and look and see what they're, you know, uh, charging or whatnot. So we had to go and walk their stores and look at these top 50 items like bread, eggs, you know, um, you know, um, whatever. You know, so we, we, we looked at each of these items to see what their price was and what our price was because they were cutting into the profits. And this is what these Jews were, were thinking. This dude is cutting into what we got going on. He, he got hundreds of thousands of people following him. What is going on? So they sent these, these cats to, uh, to uh, John, and they asked him several questions. The first thing they asked him was, are you the Messiah? And John, John was like, uh, nah, you know, I'm good. So this is coming out of uh, uh, verses 19, 19 through 25, if you're, if you're following me. So they, they, they asked John, are you the Messiah? Now, first of all, I'm, I'm here to tell you that knowing who you're not is probably more important than knowing who you are. Knowing who you're not, because they ask him, are you the Messiah? John said, oh, no, 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 no. I am not the Messiah. Cause, see, because John, John knew that the Messiah was perfect and he wasn't perfect. John knew that 
he was a sinner and the Messiah was sinless. John knew that he was weak and the Messiah was all powerful. So John was like, nah, I am not the Messiah at all. So then they say, okay. So then they, they want to uh, pop another question at him. So, uh, so they asked him, John, are you, well, they didn't say John, but, but they said, are you Elijah? So they asked him if he was Elijah. Now, the reason why they asked him if he was Elijah was because if you uh, know about the uh, last book of the Old Testament is Malachi. OK, so uh, 400 years have passed. And in, in, in the book of Malachi, it says that Elijah is coming back. OK, so he's going to come back. And so they asked they asked him, are you Elijah? Now, it's interesting. Now, we know that we're not going to say that we're the Messiah, that we're not Christ, okay? But sometimes we as Christians can fall into this trap of being like somebody else. So being like, you know, like e, like e Elijah. And I can even attest that um, when I was going through a, a training through Pastor Manuel, the one thing Pastor Manuel told me is, Tom, find your voice. You know, because I, I found myself, you know, following the way he preaches, you know, reading the books that he reads, you know, uh, and just, just being like him, you know. And and it got to a point where I can remember the first sermon that I preached at, um, as a pastor. I'm, I'm trying to put my voice and Pastor Manuel's voice. So I'm having these three topics and also these questions. On, and Shirley was like, man, you are not yourself. <laughs> You know, you speak personality up there, you know, who, who am I listening to? So, no, but anyway, so you need to find your voice. You know, you, you, you need to be the best you that God made you, you know, so find your voice. So, so, uh, um, uh, John was like, nah, I'm not Elijah. No. And then they said, okay, are you the prophet? Now they didn't say, are you a prophet? They said, are you the prophet? And they knew who the prophet was, you know, that they were talking about Moses, you know, because in Deuteronomy 18, it also says that Moses is coming back. So they thought he was like the second Elijah or the second uh, uh, Moses. And John was like, nah, I am not the, the uh, prophet. So John is just, just, just throwing out everything. He said, nah, he said, I am not this, I am not that. You know, so they're asking him all these questions. So then they said again. Who is this? Who are you? It's kind of, so, you know, so they're, they're asking these questions. And finally, and, um, you know, John, John did tell them because they're like, look, we can't go back. It says that it says that you need to tell us who you are because we need to know we cannot go back to where we're from and not tell them who you are. So John says that I am that voice, that voice in the wilderness making a way for the Lord. He said, I'm that voice. See, we are that voice. We are in the wilderness and we should be making a way for the Lord. So John knew who he wasn't. And then John said, I'm making a way for the Lord. So he's continuing to do what he, his, his testimony or his calling was, is to make the way for Jesus Christ. John is, is, is being succinct. He's like, look, I know who I am. I know exactly who I am. He said, I know who I'm not. I am not the Messiah. I am not Elijah. And I am not the prophet. So now he's saying, okay, who are you? So John was like, look, you know what? John, John is telling him, you know, starting in verse 26. He said, man, he said, look, I'm, I'm baptizing in water. I'm baptizing with water. He said, the person who's coming, who, who's coming, y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even have an idea of of, of who this person is. But they're coming after me. The, the, even though I was in front, he said, this person is coming after me. And y'all don't even know. So then, it's interesting because it goes on, and then it says, in verse 29, it says, the next day. So John told them this yesterday. He said, look, I'm baptized in water. And he said that, uh, the, he said, he who, who, in verse 27, it is he coming after me, um, uh, whose sandals, who sandals that I cannot, um, I cannot even strap. See, John knew 
that he said, look, the person who's coming after me, I'm nothing. I can't even tie this person's shoes. I mean, this person is wearing the new Air Jordans. I can't even touch him. If I touch him, this person is going to get upset. He said, I can't even touch his shoes. This is who's coming. Then, then the next day happens. And the next day, it's kind of like Jesus is like waiting. He's like, yeah, he said, John, you know, you set it up perfectly. You followed the plan. The plan that I have, for, the, the plan that the Father had for you is just to make the way. Don't, don't get in front. Just make the way. And then Jesus comes out the next day, and John, John is like fire, fire marshal Bill on, on, on the 11 color. He was like, let me tell you something. He said, John is like, look, I told y'all yesterday. Let me tell you something, who this is. He said, behold, the Lamb of God. He said, this person takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus comes through, and John is like, look, this is who he is. I'm telling you. I am telling you who this is. Let me tell you, he is the Lamb of God. And this is the, this is the way John is throwing it down. Because see, John was telling him, look, y'all, y'all didn't even know. You're priests and you're Levites, and you didn't even know that Jesus was in your presence. Jesus was in their presence. They didn't even know. You know, because it goes to, show, it goes to tell us that, that, that if you're called for something, if Jesus, if God makes a promise to your calling, he's always going to be there with you. We should not fear on, 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 on what's going on. I know Elizabeth was afraid to uh, uh, get up and talk to people. I get afraid, but if God, if this is a calling that God has for us, he's always going to be with us. He's always there. So John is testifying on Jesus' presence. That he's always there. Let me tell you, he's the Lamb of God. So John understood Jesus' presence. John also understood Jesus' greatness. Because John knew that he could not save himself. John already said, look, I can't even tie his his shoes. I can't even tie his shoes. I know I can't walk in the shoes. I can't even tie his shoes. So he knew that he was not, that, that there was no one greater than Jesus Christ. See, John, not only did he know who he was and who he wasn't, he knew who Jesus is. See, that's how we make 2023 a great life, is that we got to know who Jesus is. John is already showing us that he's always with us, that he's great. And John is also, he's testifying about Jesus' calling. He said, behold, this is the Lamb of God. And that's a very profound statement that John is making. It's a very profound and impactful statement. Because who is John making this to? He's making this statement to the Levites, those priests. If you guys understand the uh, tribe of Levi, they were the priests of, of, the, uh, of the Hebrews. They were the ones that basically were the ones that sacrificed. Because if you sin, they would throw up all these sacrifices. And what did they sacrifice mainly? Lambs. So for generations, generations after generations, these Levites would sacrifice these lambs. All these, all these generations. And, and John is saying, look, behold, the Lamb of God. He was like, all those other lambs, you don't have to do that anymore. He was letting them know that these lambs were a picture of Jesus Christ. That these lambs were pointing to Jesus Christ. You don't have to sacrifice any lambs. He is the lamb. He is that sacrificial lamb. This is what John is saying. That he's the lamb of God. So all those those sacrifices we don't need anymore. John is letting us know. Behold, he takes away all the sins. All the sins that we've ever committed. All the sins. And John is saying that. And then we see that John is like, because remember, and I think a lot of people, their favorite verses, it, verses Jeremiah 29, 11. I think there's a few people in here who, 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 who've told me that their, their, their verse, their, their, their favorite verse is 29, uh, 11 of Jeremiah, where it says that, you know, uh, God... God knows our thoughts. Or God has plans for us. God has thoughts for us. Plans that will not bring us danger, but plans that, that will prosper us. You see, John, 
John, John was, was, was letting us know that God's calling, that Jesus' calling was, was already planned. That, 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 that Jesus was following the calling of his father. And when John, and John, John see God, the, the way God is with us, and we have to understand, God is not a vague God. He, he's not one of these guys that's going to give us partial answers or partial questions or partial plans. God's going to be specific. He's going to tell you X, Y, Z, one, two, three, exactly what's going on. Or A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. God's going to be specific in what he tells us. And then John, so John is also saying, look, I, I, I know who Jesus is. I, I, I understand his, his presence. I understand his greatness. I understand his calling. His calling was to come here and take away the sins for each and every one of us, was to be that sacrificial lamb. And John is telling us that the reason why I know this is because even though I'm bearing witness to you guys about who he is, but God, the Father, bear witness to me. It says it. John, John says it. It says it says in John. It says that. Um, it says that in verse thirty-three. He said. He said, "I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water upon him." He said, "He's the one that told me." See, God the Father told John the Baptist that God the Son was going was the Lamb of God, and we see that because John, God the Father said, "Look." He said, look, when you are out there baptizing all these sinners, he said, I'm going to tell you which one is the one that's not one of these sinners. He said, all these other people are coming to you. They're liars. They're cheaters. They're fornicators. They're adulterers. They're robbers. You know, he said, but I'm going to let you know. So there's no false identification that there's no misrepresentation of who the son of God is or who the lamb of God is. He said, I'm going to let you know. So God the Father said, look, I'm going to give you clear evidence of who my son is. He said, when my son come, he said, you don't know. Now, John says, he said that I did not know him before. John knew him because John is his cousin. John is six months older than Jesus Christ. So John knew who Jesus was, but John didn't know that he was the son of God. So right when he, he's about to baptize uh, 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 Jesus, God said, look, a dove. A dove's going to come and rest upon him. Then you know that is my son. And God made specific. He, God told John, uh, John when he was baptized in Jesus, he said, whoa, hold up. This is my son and I am pleased. So now you know he is not a fornicator. He is not an adulterer. He's not a sinner. He's not a robber. This is my son. So God the Father is letting, letting John, John the Baptist know that God the Son is his son. He said, now I'm going to send God the Holy Spirit to rest upon him. You see, that's the Trinity. So during his baptism, John, is he knew specifically that this is the, the Lamb of God. Because God made, made it to where even, even Ray Charles can see that this was the Son of God. Because Ray Charles would see that dove coming down on the Son of God, on Jesus Christ, and this is this is who the Son of God is, the Lamb of God. You see, see, John's making it clear. See how we how do we know? How do we want to make sure 2023 is a great life? Is that we gotta know who you are. You gotta know who you're not, and you gotta know who Jesus Christ is. That, that's how you live a great life in 2023. God has plans for each and every one of us. God has a calling for each and every one of us. And all we have to do is obey. Obey and listen to what God is saying. And, though, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His plans are not our plans. You know, we might have a way, I mean, uh, it's kind of like I, I just told you that, you know, um, you know, we will be preaching out of John you know, the, the, uh, the book of John for the whole year. God might have a different plan for me. God might change it. I got to be obedient to what God is saying. Might not make any sense for me. God, you mean I put all this work in? I know every week, every scripture that's going to be tied, you're going to change it up? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the way God is. And he wants to know we're going to be obedient to his word. It's not going to make sense to us. 
So we need to be obedient. 2023, we need to be obedient to his word. That's how we make 2023 a great life. Are you ready for 2023? Do you want to have a great life in 2023? Can I get a hand clap and praise? Then you, you need to know who you are, who you're not, and you, and you need to know who Jesus is. And that's where we're going. The book of John is going to share with us who Jesus is. And today is the first day of 2023. The very first day. And some of you say that you want to live a great life, but you haven't made that first step. You have not accepted Jesus as that Lamb of God. You have not accepted Jesus as the Son of God. You have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because he's the only way, the only one that's going to save you. There's nothing that I say. There's nothing I can do. I am not the Messiah. I know who I am. Only Jesus can save you. If you want to live in that, dwell in that house forever, live with your, your father, live with your big brother, you have to accept Jesus as the way, the only way, the narrow way. Because Jesus said that in order to get to the father, you have to come through me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Is there anyone? Is there anyone on this first day? If you want to make your life great and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. As we saw in 2022, <clears throat> we do not know when that day will come. And you have to do it on this side. You have to accept it on this side. It's too late. Once death has come, it's too late to make that, that decision. And you cannot say that you didn't know. Because if, we're, if you were, are listening on Facebook Live, if you're here today, you have heard the word. You cannot say that you did not know. That he's the only way for eternal life. Like I said at one of the homegoing services, that death is just moving day. That is not the end. You're going to live in eternity, whether it's eternal punishment or eternal life. You will be living in eternity. Death is just moving day. So where do you want to move to? Do you want to move to that big mansion that Jesus Christ has prepared for us? Or do you want to face that white throne? Is there anyone? If you are, if you are, are shy, don't want to expose yourself, you can raise your hand. We have elders, we have ministers, deacons, deaconesses that can come to you and help disciple you. Help under, to help you make uh, 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 understand <clears throat> what that cost, because it will change your life. Is there anyone, dear Heavenly Father? <clears throat> dear Father, I just thank you, thank you for 2023, Father, for this new day, this new year, Father. I just pray that if there's anyone who's struggling. By the sound of my voice, whether here today in person or listening to it later on, Father, that they're struggling about having that, living that great life, knowing who they are and who they're not, and also more importantly, knowing who Jesus Christ is, Father, that you prick their hearts, that you allow them to make that decision to change over, because we know you look at the inward, Father. You look at the heart, that we confess with our mouth that your son Jesus is Lord. I believe, believe in our heart that he rose from the dead, Father, that we are saved. And I pray that those ones who are listening to me that are struggling, that you just, 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 uh, just convict them, Father. All of us have sat there. All of us have uh, wrestled with this decision. But we know that we are living a great life. 
a life that is is with you, a life that's in you, Father. We thank you for that. I pray that all the ones who have made that decision, Father, that you continue just to strengthen them, continue to see your grace and your mercies as we travel down this new year, Father, 2023, that you continue to allow us to be that salt and that light on this decaying, this dying world, this blind, this dark world, Father, that you allow us just to give our testimonies whenever we have that opportunity and where there's always opportunities, Father, every time we open our mouth, give us the words to say, allow people to see our actions and know that we're reflecting the light of your son, Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, once again, let's, let's give God a hand clap and praise. <laughs> I truly believe 2023 is just going to be a a great year. No matter what losses that we uh, are going to come through or go through or have already gone through, I know that because we have Jesus, because we have the Holy Spirit residing in us, because we have hope that Jesus is coming back, that 2023 is going to be a great year. Great year for each and every one of us. Also, are there any uh, first-time visitors, first-time visitors? I know we have we have uh, the uh, Jacobs family over here. We want to thank you for uh, spending the time coming out um, and spending this first day of the new year with us. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to be with us. Anyone who's listening for the first time on Facebook, thank you. You know, you chose today, starting off your, your new year. I don't believe in New Year resolutions, but... You know, the, the word was given out. You chose today to listen, to listen to what, what, what God has re- revealed in, in me. And I pray that each and every one of us going through this year, that one thing that we can do is just be obedient to what God tells us. It will not make sense to your flesh. But trust me, if God called you for something, if God promised you something, he's, he's there with us. He said he'll never leave us or forsake us. And we just need to be obedient to what he tells us. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So can we all st- stand? I still feel a little, little emotional. But I still have hope. I still have faith. I still have belief that Jesus Christ is going to just continue just to make this year just a great year for each and every one of us. Also, anyone who wants to um, give, we have our offering basket also. You can give on our um, website. Dear Heavenly Father, <clears throat> dear Father, thank you once again. We thank you for for 2023, Father. We thank you for, I'm, I'm proclaiming now that 2023 is going to be a great year because you are, are, are in us, Father. Because you are going to just show up and show out and all we need to do is just continue to be obedient. I, I pray that as we leave this place, Father, that not only just uh, uh, that you allow us to arrive at our destination safely, Father, but you just show us, show us signs of who you are, Father. We, we, we see you all day, every day, but, but continue just to comfort us, especially the ones who are going through any type of grief, Father. I pray that you just uh, 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 rest your hands upon each and everyone's head, that you cover them from the head of their feet to the soles of their, the head of the, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father. I pray that you just continue just to uh, provide for us and just love us. More importantly, love us, Father, as you um, have always done, Father. Father, I thank you. I look forward to 2023. And we just want to give your son, Jesus Christ, all of our honor, our glory, and our praise. Amen. Amen.